Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very, very excited because I have a very special guest for the show today, and his name is Mike Reed, and Mike Reed is a sound healing facilitator, coach, and mentor, so I'm going to give the stage to Mike, and he's going to tell you a little about himself and what he does, and he's going to teach you a lot of things that you are going to be really surprised about that you could apply to your own life after this show, I even. So put your ears on and listen. And Mike, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, great to see you. And um, yeah, so my name is Mike Reed and I am the creator of SoundQuest and SoundQuest Academy. And SoundQuest is my sound healing business that runs a circuit of sound bath events throughout the region where I live here in British Columbia, Canada. And SoundQuest Academy is where I now teach sound healers and aspiring sound healers from around the world, the art, the science, and the business of sound healing. So yeah, my journey really began because I would say uh, 10 or 12-ish years ago, I was going through a uh, a dark period in my life. You know, I was working in a job where I was, um, you know, I didn't fit in with the people that I was working with. I was suppressing my true essence every day at my an oil mine, um, driving a giant truck around, like hauling earth from one place to another. And um, so you can imagine that environment. And um, I was just like unfulfilled in my job. I was also kind of going through a heartbreak in a in a in a breakup that I was um, experiencing, and you know, so I was just I was kind of like miserable to be honest, and um, I was you know escaping with like alcohol on my days off, and I was um, yeah just not in a good place. So I knew that um, if I kept going down this path that I was on, like it was just going to take me under. I was like heading towards a dead end road, and yeah. so. Um, I just to figure out ways to get better. And I started with yoga. My, that was my starting point. I, I had some friends that did yoga. I had a friend that owned a yoga studio that was by where I was living. And I just started on my journey through yoga. And I, the yoga practice started to make me realize that um, it was possible to change my inner world through holistic wellness practices because I was starting to find like a sanctuary within myself through the yoga, like a balanced mind, balanced emotions. Mm -hmm. And I started to stay on that path by getting more interested in other things. Like um, I joined a shamanic apprenticeship and I started working with plant medicines and I started to go to wellness seminars and trainings and like float tanks. I, I joined a men's work organization. I just kind of got on the path. I kind of got obsessed with, you know, healing wellness. I got on, I found like a spiritual path through this. Mm -hmm. And on that journey, I discovered the power of sound healing. And I remember receiving that first sound healing experience and my mind was just absolutely blown because I was experiencing like the deepest meditation that I've ever experienced in my life. I was having all kinds of like visions and like visuals and, and like this whole nervous system reset recalibration was happening. And I was just like, wow, what just happened to me? Right. And yeah. because I have a musical background previous to this, um, it intrigued me that like music and sound and vibration could have this healing effect on the mind and, and the body and the emotional state, right? And so I kind of got obsessed with it at that point. And I went down this rabbit hole of studying books on sound healing. I went and took some workshops on sound healing. I started to acquire um, crystal singing bowls and a gong and I, I was like, hmm, this is really fascinating stuff. So um, I started to want to figure out how to create an effective sound healing experience for other people so that they could experience what I was experiencing through it. Yes. Right? And so I started out just offering one-on-one -on -one sound bath experiences for free 
for my friends and family, acquaintances, anybody who would come into my space and lie down and receive. And all I was asking in return was their honest feedback. And I guess you could call this kind of my, my research and development phase. Mm -hmm. And I compiled this data of like what works, what doesn't, how to bring people into a sound bath, what to do like during a sound bath, what instruments to play for how long and how to slowly bring people out of the experience. And then over time, I was like, I, I felt somewhat ready and I started to go out into the public world. And um, I actually offered my first public sound bath event at the, the very same yoga studio where all this journey began. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was amazing. All these people showed up and um, this is the start of SoundQuest. This is the birthing of SoundQuest. I just created kind of a, uh, like a brand out of this. And then I started to partner up with a, a variety of different venues, mainly yoga studios throughout the region where I lived. And before I knew it, within not very long, I was having an ongoing circuit of these events all throughout the region. And I was starting to be able to make enough income to uh, do this full time. And this is like what I now have been doing um, for a living for you know the last six or seven years and now um, i want to help others uh, learn what i've figured out over the years in terms of creating like a system for um, the, like marketing events and um, aligning yourself with strategic partnership venues and I, i'm trying to show that sound healing is can be a real profession and it's something that you can do professionally and make a good uh, living, good income uh, from doing this full time. That's what I teach now in SoundQuest Academy. Right. So you have you have SoundQuest and then you have SoundQuest Academy. So you have yeah. you, where you teach people about sound healing. And then you also have it where you teach people how to build a business out of sound healing also. So they could actually do something that they love. And not only are they doing something that they love, they're actually healing other people at the same time. Yes, because um, my philosophy is that when you, and, you know we live on an economic planet we live in an economic world and you need that income right yeah. because yeah. if you don't learn how to turn this into what you do as a business and you don't honor it like as a business as a as a means to uh creating um a livelihood for yourself right. then you're just gonna be, be a dabbler you're gonna be a weekend warrior you're gonna have to stay in a job that um, it might be unfulfilling and you can only do this on the weekends or whatever. But when you right. start to figure out a system and a model that you can follow and uh, learn how to do this uh, full time, then you actually help more people this way. Right. right. And, you know, the butterfly effect of that is this is what I'm passionate about is helping sound healers around the world to create this system and become successful sound healers and do this for a living full time and help so many people in their communities, in their regions, uh, reset the nervous system, because I think the world will be a much better place to be um, and live in if most people are going around with a uh, healthy nervous system. And that's the ultimate result of, of sound healing. Right. Now, can you explain to people who are not that familiar with sound healing? Because there are people that have done sound healing and like, wow, I feel so relaxed. But it goes deeper than just relaxation. Like it, mm -hmm. you know, they are sound healing can be used for many things and it can do many things. Can you go a, a bit deeper and explain to people what sound healing really is and, and the benefits of it? Yeah, sure. So the way that I like to explain it is that the full spectrum of the human hearing range is typically 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And when we are being um, stimulated by the full spectrum of sound and vibration all at the same time, the part of the mind that um, interprets language, um, sound, 
the part of the mind that is listening to me speak right now, the analytical prefrontal cortex part of the mind, right. what happens is it gets so confused by this full spectrum of sound from the sound healing instruments such as gongs, crystal singing bowls, Tibetan singing bowls, ocean drums, harmoniums, like the, the sound healing tools that are used typically in a sound bath. Um, mm. it, it, it's being perceived on a cellular level, but you know, the mind can't uh, perceive the full spectrum. It can't, it can't make sense of all the stimuli that's coming in all at once. Right. And so what happens is that part of the mind gives up the, the, that kind of thinking and the mm -hmm. brain waves start to slow down and you descend into what's called the theta and delta brainwave zone, which is another way of saying meditation or sleeping. So you're kind of mm -hmm. oscillating between meditation and sleeping and when you're there the nervous system goes over from the sympathetic side of the nervous system to the parasympathetic side of the nervous system so you're now in a deep rest state right. and the mind is is uh, calm and it's it's the brain waves are slowing down the emotional body is recalibrating the nervous system is resetting and you're going into this non-sleep deep rest and right. the other phenomena can occur in this place of deep rest and you know such as you can have visions visuals you can have uh, insights of different parts of your life or your relationships or the world you can um, have a real deep spiritual experience and really come home to yourself on a deep level right mm -hmm. and um Yes, it's it's I love what I do because often at the end of a session, I have kind of a, like a lineup of people wanting to come up and just share their experience and thank me and they're they're glowing. And, you know, some people have never had a, an experience of that depth before. Right. right. It's, it's similar. Like we were talking before, uh, we, before the podcast, and it's similar to the effect of um, like having a really good Shavasana at the end of a yoga class, for example, right. you're in that a similar, you know, vibrational state within your body. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, um, you know, people will, you know, if they really, you know, focus and they're really letting go and they're really focusing on the sound and they, they go to a different area where they can actually, they feel like they, they've touched into those repressed emotions where, and then they, they come to realizations about certain things in life that in the, in the more like task zone, like we were talking about before, but when you and I are talking, we're communicating, I'm listening to you, you're listening to me, but when you're in that zone, you're kind of like tapping into your unconsciousness and, and you're, 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 you know, you come to realizations, your intuition starts to really get strong and you start to recognize things that are going on in your life and, or emotions that just pop up from nowhere and a healing process can come from this. Like, can you explain to people how powerful it can be when it comes to actually healing your, your mental health and going in and, and things that you may have been struggling with all your life with the proper guidance and, and doing it the right way, you could actually help and improve your mental health in, in, in many aspects. Can you go a little deeper into that? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So when we go descend into the theta brainwave, the delta brainwave, sometimes the alpha brainwave, we're accessing a different part of the mind. So oftentimes, when we have, let's say, an issue in our life, like relationship issue or work issue or something we're trying to figure out, we're, we're trying to do it from in the mind. We're trying to like, you know, journal about it, uh, right. like really like figure it out from, you know, like our, our, our heads. But yeah. when, you, you know, when, when, when the body can sort of fall into that deep relaxation, maybe that's where the key insights and epiphanies and awakenings where you're, you're, you're kind of descending into the subconscious zone, yeah. right? Because that's where, you know, the majority of, you know, our re reality is, is projecting from is the subconscious mind, right? So like Carl Jung says, 
until you make the unconscious conscious, it will control your life and you will just call it fate. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in a, an experience like a sound bath, you're really going in there. And yeah. so sometimes I see people just having these emotional releases when they're lying down because perhaps they haven't had that time to touch in with themselves and have that like time for sacred rest. And they've just been trying to figure everything out up here in the mind. Yeah. And it's when they touch down and they feel into their heart and their emotional body, that's when like the release can come. And that's when the healing can come. You, you have to heal, to, to heal, you have to feel, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, um, yeah, that's, that's the essence of a sound bath really is, is the opportunity to touch in to the subconscious mind because the roots become the fruits. So when you're tending to that inner garden, right, yeah. your inner landscape and you're nurturing that inner, inner world, right. then you can then uh, proceed to interface with the external world from a more yeah. balanced and uh, creative and harmonized way rather than being in reactivity as you go through through your days so that's what i love uh helping people with that's that's what i'm passionate about yeah now if, if people have sound bowls at home or they're thinking about getting them what is the proper way to start you know start go if you really want to go deep into your subconscious if you really want to start healing yourself because i believe you like when it comes to your emotions, I think everything starts from the heart. That's, you know, my opinion, you know, I, I feel it's not, you know, so many people think that we are controlled by our brains, but I think we're controlled by our hearts. And, you know, it all starts within the heart and then makes its way to the brain and, and the brain and, you know, in, in the other parts of your, your body. And I, I feel like, you know, if people are home and they wanna start really, ha you know, experience a deep healing within themselves, what are some things that you could suggest to people that could help people in their journey of healing, either with sound bowls and, and, and maybe doing things at home that can get them on the right pathway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, what I'll, I'll talk about my experience facilitating sound baths um, because I also get the benefits from the sound healing, even though I'm, I'm working or even though I'm like in the task of performing uh, a sound healing experience. So when I spend like 30 minutes sitting in front of my gongs, um, I'm actually having a meditation myself, right? Mm -hmm. Or when I'm um, using the harmonium and I'm doing some vocal overtoning, some harmonizing with my voice, yes. um, I come out of that experience, you know, like very floaty and like I, I'm having kind of a, uh, I'm getting the benefits from the, the sound and the vibration myself as well. Right. Um, so people can start by, I would say, you know, get a gong, get like a, a gong that's about 28 inches or larger in diameter. Mm -hmm. um, and a set of singing bowls. And you can you can play, you can just play and you can sit and it's actually a, a quite a meditative practice to, to sort of bathe yourself in this in the vibrations. So right. crystal singing bowls, Tibetan singing bowls, gongs, these are lovely, um, lovely allies to acquire for a meditation practice. Um, if, if someone wanted to um, just do it for their own personal use, right? And um, they're also beautiful looking instruments too. Like they're, they're quite decorative in a way. So if you're looking for, you know, the, the combination of like beautiful looking um, pieces of art or um, ornamental displays in your home, mm -hmm. you could use it for that purpose, but then also it has a practical purpose for like your meditation practice as well. Right. Now you were saying that you could use your vocal cords. Like how would somebody use their vocal cords and, and aiding them in a deeper 
and, and, and more beneficial way of, of, you know, reaching that state of either healing or reaching that calmness and clarity that they're looking for? You know, how, how would you use your vocal cords? Because you mentioned that you could use your vocal cords. How would someone do that? And why is that so important or in, uh, in the practice of, of uh, sound healing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I do typically is I, you know, if, if you've ever done yoga, you know about chanting, mm -hmm. particularly chanting Aum. Yes. Hey, you mm -hmm. Aum. And um, that will resonate the body, you know, so, so richly, it'll just, you'll feel it in your whole body. Yes. Just chanting. And it's also like a form of breathing techniques too. the breathing plus the full vibration um through your diaphragm through your through your whole being you'll start to feel a a a change in your physical state in your mental state right if, so i recommend people just try it you know just try deep breaths and chant om do at least three cycles of that okay yeah, your breath om and you'll start to feel centered and uh, calm, clear in your mind. Yeah, that's definitely. And there's a there's a beautiful uh, uh, documentary on YouTube. If you go, um, uh, I I don't know if I, I wouldn't have enough time to explain this whole thing uh, mm -hmm. in, in too much depth today. But if you go on YouTube, any of your listeners, uh, type in sonic geometry. There's okay. about a, it's a 25 or 30 minute little documentary about all this and how our bodies, the universe, um, the universal frequency of ohm, 432 hertz, it explains it all. So if you have some extra time, go watch that on YouTube. It's, it'll explain everything in much more depth. And it's, it's a beautiful documentary. It's, it's actually mind blowing. Wow. That sounds very, very interesting. I think I'm definitely going to do that. I, I, you know, I, I feel the effects of um, when I do sound healing, I see the difference in myself. I see the difference, the way I think, the way I feel my health, everything feels aligned. Everything feels, you know, that, that, you know, I feel better and better each day. Now, when you do sound healing for people at home, you know, or people who come, come to get sound healing, what do you suggest? Do you suggest that this is something they incorporate in their daily life? Is this something that they should do maybe every couple of days? You know, if you really want to get the full effect and you really want to improve your life, you know, what's your suggestion of how much and you should practice it and how long is a good amount of time for each session? Hmm. Yeah, I think that if we all had um, time every day to tune inward mm -hmm. and do this practice, whether it's 20 minutes of meditation in the morning, um, a yoga practice, going and receiving a sound bath, whatever it is for yeah. you to go inward and find that that space of you know self love self healing um, calm recalibration of the nervous system yes. right then like i said it's like you you'll find that you go through your days and your interactions with people like if for example you see this um with some people you'll observe have like road rage when they're on the road, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's someone who doesn't have a, a regulated nervous system that doesn't have, they likely don't have a meditation practice or they don't tune inward on a regular basis. And so they're in yeah. their reactivity, right? Mm -hmm. Someone right. who gets easily irritated, you're easily um, um, dissonant emotionally. Right. Um, it's someone that typically uh, doesn't have this kind of practice going on on a regular basis. Right. right? Because if you start your day every day with a, a yoga class or a meditation, sound bath, sound healing, something like this, um, like you'll notice the whole day kind of goes like that. That's how the whole day will pan out. Right. So instead of getting angry in, 
at someone who is driving too slow in traffic or, or what you perceive as a bad driver or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Instead of that, you'll be like, hmm, maybe a little more compassion. There's a little bit more space between you and the stimuli and the reaction to the stimuli, right? Right. So you, if you have this happening on a, on a regular basis, um, ideally every day, this is what this is just a lifestyle that you that someone lives is coming into that that space of um, inner alignment, and mm -hmm. that way, uh, as you interact with the world around you, you know a, a much uh, more uh, what's the word? You know, they'll have a like a in a harmony. You'll be it's in like flow. You'll be in flow. Like the Taoists call it the Wu Wei, mm -hmm. right? Wei Wu yeah. Wei, effortless action, doing without doing, flow. You'll be in flow, and that's yeah. why uh, I would recommend every day if someone can, if everyone can carve out that time every day, then you're you're going to be much better off. Oh, yeah. So when you when you um, do the sound baths, like um, does it um, is it is, is it is it the, you know the first thing like you like to do is it you know what will be some of the steps when you go into a sound bath? You know what do you expect when you go into a sound bath? Yeah, so when I have an event, when I'm doing um, a typical sound bath event that I'm that that I'm running, sometimes I get hired for like private bookings and corporate events and things like that. And then in, in those cases, I kind of uh, cater to what's needed for that particular private group or right. what have you, or experience yes. or event. But mm -hmm. if it's my own event that I'm hosting, then um, I like to stimulate all the senses. Mm -hmm. And so when people walk into the room, they just immediately know they can smell the smudge the Palo Santo or, or sage, the incense, they can see a beautiful kind of aesthetic layout of the room where the, the mats are ready with the bolsters and pillows and blankets. Yeah. Uh, there's nice music playing, right? So like all the senses are stimulated, the limbs, the, the, the lights are dimmed and yes. maybe some candles and that sort of thing. And so when people enter their like ah oh, it's like a sanctuary immediately yeah. and they know right off the bat that this is a safe place for them to just rest right and receive you know yeah. there's nothing to do here there's nowhere to go there's nothing to figure out all you have to do is just rest and receive right right and um so when people come into the space ideally like it's all set up for them like that and they just have to lie down. I like to introduce, um, you know, a little bit of explanation of what's going to happen for like newcomers, mm -hmm. what to do if say the mind won't settle, what to do if you have um, uh, an emotional experience that might seem uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and then we start working a little bit with the breath, breathing techniques. Um, I pull in influences from my own experiences, like um, things that I've been trained in or things that I have been on the receiving end of that I enjoyed. And I kind of bring all this eclectic mix of my kind of my life's resume into the experience and channel it through um, the sound bath. And anyone can do this who's who's an aspiring sound healer or wants to do this for themselves, they, you can create kind of like a signature style that's unique to you based on what you have experience with, right? right. So I've experienced with breath work, yoga. Um, so I pull in influences like yoga nidra, body scanning techniques. It's almost like this deep relaxation process before I even start the sound bath, mm -hmm. right? And then I, start to introduce sound with perhaps some of the Tibetan singing bowls, getting them kind of primed and ready to go deep and receive. Because when right. I first started, I would just go immediately into the sound. And then remember, I, I went through that kind of research and development phase. Yes. And I realized through that all those sessions, months of like one on one sessions that um, like what's effective, what's not. And I realized that um, 
having a process before the sound healing starts mm -hmm. is important to get people dropped in because people are coming from all kinds of different scenarios like work you know maybe they're having yeah. issues they just drove through traffic to get there you know you need yeah. to there needs to be a, a process of like separating them from the outside world and getting them like dropped in and present yeah. and then i can start the sound bath and usually that's about 70 minutes or so and wow. then i about 10 minutes afterwards slowly bringing them out maybe i'll play a, a guitar song and sing mm -hmm. you know and then yeah. um so yeah just slowly start to bring them out i used to bring people out to uh, sit upright and sometimes I still do that and we, we actually chant together and I'll play the harmonium and we'll we'll like sing we'll um, harmonize with our right. voices and chant ohm together mm -hmm. or you know I could leave them lying down and they can just get up at their own pace and and that's usually a nice way to do it because some people are not ready to get back up again right yeah yeah so some people want to stay laying down for quite some time and I, I'm okay with that. Like if that's what you need, just stay exactly where you are. And then, right. yeah, yeah. And then I, I usually um, offer these experiences once a month at each location. And it's just been going around like that in a circuit for for the last uh, yeah six years or so. Wow. Now, is there a certain way that you um, teach them to breathe while you're doing this? Or is that, do they just slow down their breathing or are they breathing normally? Yeah. So I usually do like maybe box breathing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is. It's, uh, it's just like you breathe in, you hold for about five seconds, breathe out for five seconds, hold the out breath for five seconds. And we just do um, several cycles of, of this box breathing or um, just real simple, six deep inhalations deep into the belly, exhale, it could be real simple. I could do more of like a Wim Hof style breath work technique. Yeah. It, it changes, it depends on kind of what I'm intuitively sensing about the group. Right. right. Yeah. Now, if you had to take some of the takeaways from our discussion today. What are some important things you'd like to emphasize to our listeners? Yeah, I would say that uh, the world would be a better place if everyone had time every day where they carve out and do some inner reflection and meditation. And instead of like trying to always figure stuff up, stuff out from from the mind, yeah. um, drop into your heart a bit more. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? And drop into the body and like there's so much to learn from what's stored in the body. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, somatic therapy is massively beneficial because the right. intelligence of the body, I think, is we I think we live in like a very heady culture. Yeah. And we forget how much intelligence the body has, right? Oh, yeah. And, and we're always trying to figure things out from the mind. But when you receive something like a sound bath or have a meditation practice, or you could do whatever it is, like a float tank. Remember, I don't know if you know what that is, but mm -hmm. it, the float, the sensory deprivation tanks were quite a big thing for a little while there. But I haven't really been uh, hearing much about sensory deprivation tanks lately. But I, I remember doing those and that was huge. So spending an hour like weightless in yeah. a dark little um a little uh whatever pod and uh <laughs> yeah so i would say that you know just daily practice of tuning inward and um creating that space between you and external stimuli so that you just have that extra bit of pause before reacting yes. because you know, every day life is coming at us at some, in some way or another. You might get an email that you didn't expect, or you might get some news that you weren't prepared for, or right. something might suddenly change. This is just life, right? There's so yeah. much that we are not in control of. Yeah. And so, you know, the, you, I can't just be always reacting to everything all, all at the same time. Otherwise, I'm, I would drive myself crazy, right? So exactly. invitation... Yeah to anyone listening is find a way to create 
some space each day and tune inward and find that inner sanctuary that's always accessible. Yes. Right. Great. I agree. That's great advice. That is really great advice. Now you also said that you have something on your website that you give away. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, on uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, SoundQuest Academy YouTube channel, um, you can receive a free 50 minute sound bath that I've recorded. Uh, wow. So if you want to experience sound healing for the first time, I would definitely recommend um, doing it in person. It's a little bit more impactful because you can feel the vibrations on, 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 like on a full body level. Um, but if you want to see what I do and experience it for yourself, uh, go on to SoundQuest Academy on YouTube and you'll find a 50 minute sound bath um, that will give you um, somewhat of the real life experience if you put on a good set of headphones or good speakers and just lie down somewhere comfortable um, and just be ready to receive and, and go into a, a meditative space. I love it. I love it. Now, what is your website? Where can people find you? Yeah, so I have uh, soundquestacademy.com. And if anybody's interested in um, an introductory course on sound healing, which will include, you know, the science, the theory, the history, um, video tutorials on how to play certain instruments and so forth. There's an introductory course on Sound Quest Academy. There's also uh, my signature program, which is called the Sound Healer Blueprint, mm -hmm. which is a course that has 12 modules that goes through everything from the foundations of sound healing, all the different types of instruments, um, tutorials, and then we start getting into creating a signature style, getting into branding, getting into how to uh, set up uh, in-person events, market those events, fill rooms consistently, align yourself with partnership venues where you host these events and mm -hmm. creating multiple income streams and creating a well-oiled machine that will help you uh, create a living from sound healing and help a lot of people in the process and live a, a great lifestyle. And then I have a year long mastermind program in SoundQuest Academy, which is 12 months and uh, we go way deeper. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm walking alongside of you the entire time for the whole year as a mentor. Wow, that's amazing. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? The services are, you know, I will do my ongoing circuit of my own events, but I'm also available for private events. Like I've, I've worked with companies like Range Rover, um, corporate uh, headquarters I've gone in and done like you know the, the staff of a, a, a court uh, it was interesting going into an office setting where people are all professionally dressed um, I work in home with people um, I do special events um, mm -hmm. I do you know sound healing from stages and like ballrooms at hotels and and um, also you know, really cool wellness events like this year, we're doing a, an event called the new human regeneration event. It's here in British Columbia. And I think that's going to be a record setting sound bath for me. There's going to be, I think 500 or so people lying down in wow. the space. Yeah. And um, so all kinds of exciting things. And I also do wellness retreats and, um, you know, people hire me to sometimes do sound healing for, um deeper experiences like using like plant medicine ceremonies and sort of those sort of uh, settings mm -hmm. um so those are my main offerings that i do and then i also do like one-on-one -on -one coaching uh if anybody wants a consultation call as well who wants to get into sound healing or wants to bring their sound healing practice to a higher level then i'm mm -hmm. available for one-on-one -on -one coaching calls as well that's excellent. Now, do you also do coaching for people who want to do sound baths, but they might live a, dif a distance? Do you do anything on Zoom for it, people? Yeah, SoundQuest Academy is all remote. It's all online. So, um, yeah, I do all of my consulting and coaching calls and 
um, it's all done through Zoom or on the uh, uh, back end of the course portals. Excellent. Wow. This is great. I love it. I love it. And can you just tell everybody your website one more time, that your two websites? Yeah, just go to soundquestacademy.com and it's all there. Okay, wonderful. And they could also find you on YouTube as well. You have a and lot YouTube, of YouTube. Yeah. And follow me on uh, Instagram, SoundQuest, or Facebook, SoundQuest. Wonderful. Wow, this has been amazing. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all this this knowledge with us. Um, you know, I I love sound healing. I feel like it has a huge benefit in people's lives if they apply it to their lives and they do it on a consistent basis. They can really turn their life around, both mentally and physically, spiritually. And like you said, it, it affects your business too, because everything is connected. So if you're not connected mentally and you're not doing well physically and you're not connected spiritually, it's gonna affect your business. It's gonna affect the way you think, your clarity, your stress level, and that goes home. So that affects your personal life as well. So it's really all interconnected and you really have to take care of yourself. And if spiritually, if you stay connected with yourself and you really understand understand who you are and the areas you need to work in and, and improve yourself. It really can improve your overall life and your overall health in the long run. So I, I really feel what you're doing. It, it really benefits society. And I, I thank you for taking the time out to, you know, give yourself to, to people and show people, you know, how they can improve themselves and their lives. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure being on a podcast with you today, Stacey. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.